for you, me. My God, God. Whatever you need. Go on, give him a hand wave and give him a praise. Go ahead on and give him a praise. Praise his holy name this morning. Give him some praise. Oh, ain't he all right? Ain't the Lord all right? Go on and praise him. Whatever you need, your God's got it. He good like that. Give him some praise and give him some glory. Come on, lift your hands and give him some glory. I shall trust in the Lord with all my heart, mind, and soul. Come on, exalt the Lord and lift up his holy name. For our God is an awesome God. Come on, give him a praise. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. He's worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the saints. How many of you got the victory this morning? Victory is mine. I told Satan to get thee behind. Come on, let's get the Lord a hand praying. I don't know about you, but I feel good in my soul this morning. Woo! Deacon Payton said he had no doubt. And Minister Loretta said, if you need peace, our God's got it. If you need love, my God got it. If you need some joy, woo. How many of y'all feeling all right? Woo. I'm not going to be before you long this morning. I'm going to try to teach you a little bit if I can. Is that alright? But I'm a, how many of y'all know God? Go ahead, Steph. How many of y'all know God? How many of y'all love the Lord this morning? Man, I, I don't know about you, but I just got a praise in my soul this morning. Amen. Hey, Somebody say hallelujah real loud if you feel God this morning. Woo! Deacon Terry, I got a praise in my spirit this morning. Because God's been good. How many God's been good to you? Woke you up this morning in your right mind. Come on, give him a praise. Amen. Before we go on with our sermon, we want to make sure we keep our church mother and our sister we want to keep them up in prayer, amen? amen? And also we want to keep the family of Deacon Willie Bridges up in, up in prayer. Uh, Deacon Bridges lost his uncle last week, so we want to keep them in prayer. Is that all right? Amen. I want to welcome back our sister Bernice to the service. She just lost her mother, amen? Back here praising the Lord this morning. Let's give the Lord a hand praise. Amen. And also, I want to acknowledge our chairman of the deacon board, uh, Deacon Thompson. Him and his wife, Judy, been married now for 53 years. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand praise for him. Amen. In the last two weeks, we've been talking to you about getting the word to work for you. Amen. And, and, and this morning, what I want to talk about, uh, I want to talk to you about giving the word to preeminence in your life. And we're going to look at uh, some scriptures about Jesus. Amen. But what I want you to 
get out of this is that Jesus Christ is the word of God that God spoke from the beginning. Amen? And to help me out a little bit here, I want you to go over to uh, Colossians with me. If you would, go to Colossians with me, the first chapter. And when you have it, say amen. amen. And I'm going to read a few verses to you. If you start in verse 14, chapter 1 and 14, the, the word of the Lord, read, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. Amen. amen. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. But here's the emphasis of the scripture here. Listen to this, y'all. For by him was all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or power, all things were created by him and for him. And listen, verse 17, and he is before all things and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the, of the church. I'm sorry, he's the head of the body of the church who is the beginning. The firstborn from the dead that in all things he might have the preeminence. And let us look at one more passage of scripture over in John. Amen. Very familiar pa passage of scripture. John, the first chapter. I'm going to read verse 1 down to verse number 3 and then verse 14. Amen. The word reads that in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Again, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. And read verse 14, it says, And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen. Important to understand people. We, the first passage of scripture we read was out of the book of Colossians and Colossians is a book with with a high study of Christology what it, it, it focus on the exaltation of Jesus Christ and the reason it focuses on his exaltation how many y'all know that that if we lift Jesus up anybody gonna pray with me how, how many of you know one of your weapons of warfare is if you going through something and you get down if you want to change the situation, if you will begin to lift Jesus up, he would actually begin to draw you closer to him. And where he goes, the devil can't follow. So, so, so Paul was teaching the church in Colossians, I want you to see Jesus for who he is. And people, the word of God is revelatory, meaning it gets stronger as you read it because it reveals more and more about God and how many y'all know in the beginning the Bible says minister Thomas it says in the beginning that God made the heaven and the earth am I right about it and it says that the Spirit of God was on the water and it says that everything no more than seven eight times it says that God said and something came into creation now Deacon Whipple Colossians come back and tells us and add a little bit to it and says that um, he created all things and there was nothing that was not made except he made it. And then John come back and says that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and it says all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. And how many of y'all know when it's talking about all things was made right there, it's not saying God made all things. 
It says all things were made by the word. Now, if you got a Bible and you look at the 14th verse, you're going to see it says, and the word was made flesh. But I want you to notice that W is capital because it's talking about a deity. Are y'all with me here? So in other words, people, who is the word? Huh? Jesus is the word. He existed from the beginning as the word until he was manifested or incarnated and born in Bethlehem. Before this, he existed in the beginning with God, but he existed as the word of God. So the word has always been there. Now watch what God does to create for you and I to learn how to use faith. People, how many of you know God said and then he saw? But see, it's too many of us want to see and then we'll say. But how many of you know you got to be able to say and then see? How many of y'all know that if, if you got faith, it means you, you're asking God for something you don't have? So if you don't have it, you can't see it. But if you believe it and say it, it, it triggers something in the spiritual realm and you will have what you say if you believe that you have it before you see it. Now watch what God does. When God creates, he says, let there be light. Notice he called for what he didn't have. God is saying to you, whatever it is you need that's in my word, the way you get it is, you call for it. In other words, you gotta call for it because I'm asking you to live in the faith realm. How many of y'all know your eyes can trick you? And how many of you know your mind can trick you? And how many of y'all know sometimes it hurt to want something bad? And how many of you know there are some times when you're going to want something that seems impossible for you to have? God said, I want you to replace your impossible with a word called faith because faith takes you into a realm where you can do the impossible. God say the reason you're unique, you're the only people who have been designed to live by what you do not see. Now this is important people. How many of you ever seen God before? But you believe he exists. Deacon Gavin, stand up one second for me. Now sit back down. Now, people, do you realize Deacon Gavin just applied faith because he sat down without looking where he was sitting and there was no doubt in his mind that his body would be supported by a chair. God say if you can trust a car to crank up in the morning and if you can trust to sit down and a chair will hold you, how much more should you trust me that holds the whole world up by the power of my word? God is saying you live automatically by faith every day whether you know it or not. Every time you do something, you have to believe. God said, but you don't believe everybody else. Now it's time for you to believe me. God said, tell somebody believe God. But say, I, I need a hard thing done. Let's go here, y'all, to the word of God. Now think about this over in the book of Genesis, the Lord has made man and female. And people, they are living by what they believe. There was nothing written. The only thing they had was what God had said. Now, again, over in the book of Hebrews it says, 
that we understand that by faith all things and the world was framed by the word of God people so that the things that we see are the things that appear were not made of what you see in other words when God created a tree Deacon Irvin he's saying that tree the first tree he made there it wasn't created by wood he's saying the ocean the river he made even though it appears water pray with me in here it wasn't made by water. Now notice what it was made by. He spoke first. So the invisible word made everything that was visible. Come on, help me here, church. Listen now. If God made a mountain, he didn't say, he didn't say that a mountain and then called it a mountain. No, he spoke the invisible word mountain and then a mountain showed up so that that which is invisible was made by in other words, whatever God made, he didn't see it. He spoke the word first. That means that everything that is created has its origin in the word of God. But it also means anything that you need that the word say you can have, if you don't have money, if you don't have car, all you need is this precious word and it will produce what it say. Tell somebody, I really don't need it. But what I need is a word. But people, you got to put faith in the word. And, and, and how many of you know you got to live by, in other words, you got to establish a lifestyle of dealing with the word. In other words, you got to get married to the word. And you got to talk to the word each and every day. I'm not talking about just when you pray it. I'm, I'm going to say this one more time. I told the preachers here before. When I preach, I do not preach to impress you or for you to leave and say that man preached. I study the word of God to live. And I preach the word to reinforce what I'm trying to live. In other words, when a preacher come up here, it shouldn't be important to impress you. But it ought to have been so good to them in their study time that they couldn't keep it to themselves and they decided to share it with you. But we study the word to live by. Now let me get on out of here because over here in Genesis, now listen y'all, whenever you start believing, understand me, it moves you into the spiritual realm. Whenever you stop believing, it brings you back into the sense realm. So if I want to do some great things, how many of you know God gave me imagination? How many of y'all got imagination? How many of y'all imagine owning your own business? You imagine getting your doctor degree. How many of y'all know God gave you imagination so that you can believe things that you don't have now? Tell somebody, I got to use my imagination. Let me pull some of y'all in here who don't want to get that with me. The temptation made us all. All right, you already in. I ain't got to go no further. Amen. But God said it's time for you to let your imagination, you've been in one situation for 15 years. Are y'all with me? Now you need to go to another place. But you need a better job. You need more education, but you don't have money. The problem does not lie in what you don't have. The problem lie is when you think about God, what comes over your mind? When I'm sick, do God ever come on my mind? If I'm tired and wild, do God ever come on my mind? 
When I can't pay my bills, do God ever come on my mind and say, I'm Jehovah Jireh and I'll provide for you? Do God ever come on my mind when I get in trouble? God said, turn to me. Leave the realm of what you don't have and start thinking into the realm of abundance living and set your mind on me. Now listen to this, y'all. God created Adam and Eve, am I right? Told them, when we're going to get out of here, you can eat all the trees in the garden. But y'all, it's one called the knowledge of good and evil. I don't want you to partake of that one. For in the day that you do, Minister Heron, you shall surely die. Anybody go pray with me? Are y'all with me here? God didn't write that down. He spoke that. And then the Bible tells us that one day Eve was just out there near the tree. And there was an enemy present that she didn't know was there. And he didn't show her anything written because it was nothing written. So he started saying the stuff that God said. And he said, look, God said that if we eat of this tree, we shall surely die. And, 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 and Satan said, ha, huh, that's not what's going to happen. God knows that in that day, you will become like God with the little G. That know the difference between good and evil. Now, why is this important? People, do you know, prior to this, the only people who knew what evil was, was God and the angels, because when Satan sinned in heaven and were cast out Adam and Eve didn't exist so they didn't have an idea what evil was but they didn't know that good and evil is a lifestyle and what is the problem with good and evil here it is what may be good to Gavin may not be good to me what may be bad to Gavin how, how many of y'all in here would agree that, all, that there are some foods you like that other people don't like so there's some food good to you, but may not be good to him. So God didn't want them living with an option. Anytime you got an option, you can be right or wrong. God said, I want you to believe the word. And only the word. Just like you got to serve one God and only the God. Let me get on in here. If I'm in a club. Anybody go pray with me? Call the Bishop's Club. But the Bishop's Club is not greater than God. If I'm a billionaire, God still has to have the preeminence in what I say and do. In other words, to live by the word, it means to allow the word to have more influence on you than anyone else. Anybody go pray with me? Now, notice what happens here, y'all. When Satan, and I'm going to read this to you here. When Satan begins to talk to Eve, sisters and Eve is all right. Are y'all with me here? And I want to share something with you here. Now, Eve is carrying on a conversation with Satan. Here we go. Satan says, for God knows in, that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Now watch what happens to the woman. And when the woman saw, when she began to see, she began to move out of the faith realm 
into the sense realm. Listen what happens now. She saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes. Notice now, she's beginning to live by sight and not by faith what God told her. And a tree to be desired of, to make one wise, but how many of y'all know the faith? She ate it to receive wisdom, but you gotta remember, whenever you dealing with Satan, you never get what he promised. She thought she was gonna get wisdom and she got death because she left the spiritual of the faith realm. So in other words, God says, and I'm finna close up, the, 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 the man has become like one of us, knowing good. In other words, God is saying, because of what they did, out of God the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, they had become like one of them, and the one they became like was the Word. Now, how did they become like the Word? Because God asked you to live by the Word. They weren't going to live by the Word anymore. They was going to live by what they decided was good or evil. How many of y'all married in here? Raise your hand. Now, I'm going to ask you a question here. Any of y'all ever argue with your mate? Yeah. Now, listen to this thing. Now, how many know it's inevitable we're going to have some arguments? But how many of y'all know you argue about a lot of things that don't make any sense? How many of you know you complain about things that should have been settled 35 years ago? Oh, I need some help in here right now. See, see, come on, come to the show what I'm saying here. Now, listen to what I'm trying to say. Now, let me say something else in here, too. We have to renew our minds. Brother, how many of y'all know, and listen to me good, if a woman got manners and she smile at you and treat you nice, that doesn't mean she want to get with you. See, what I'm trying to say, when we when we in the flesh so much, even good manners can be misused for something that it ain't. But now hold on for a minute, let's listen to another part in that too. How many of you know everybody's not like you? Deacon Terry, if Deacon Terry can carry on a conversation with a woman and stay in the spiritual realm and ain't trying to do nothing with her, just because you can't do that, ain't no need of you getting mad at him. Everybody ain't like you. Just because you can't possess yourself in a spiritual man, everybody ain't like you. Come on, help me in here, y'all. Just because you will do it, everybody else won't do it. Just because you're not governed by the word, that don't mean I'm not governed by the word. And then another thing, what happens here, when you're having conflict, have you ever thought you never ever argue with your mate and your argument is in the spiritual realm? Did anybody hear what I just said? When you argue with your mate, there's nothing you are arguing about that ever have anything to do with God. Why? Because he's a God of order and peace. And now, you want to bring peace to your home, Stop talking about that stuff that happened 20 years ago that you still can't settle now. Stop trying to change your husband into who you want him to be and pray that God make him who he called him to be and you will see a difference in what's going on. But you got to leave. you got to leave out of the fleshly realm. 
because what you see can lie to you. What you hear can lie to you. What you feel can lie to you. But God says my word is greater than your feelings. So the woman, she saw, Deacon Bridget, she saw, she ate, and her whole life changed. But now listen, Deacon is ivory. God said, the man has become like one of us. Are y'all with me? So to straighten man up since he became like one of us, one of us got to become like them. And that's when he sent Jesus in Bethlehem, born of a virgin. So, man couldn't believe in the beginning without seeing. So God sent Jesus that they can see and believe. But once he sent Jesus to see and believe, he takes Jesus away and sends us the Holy Spirit. So you don't have to see Jesus anymore. You just got to know he lives inside of you. So when you want to make a move in life, if you trust God, and make him the preeminence of your life and you marry his word anybody gonna pray with me you can't marry his word off and on with him you got to deal with this word each and every day you got to munch chew and absorb his word to it get in you to a degree that when somebody make you mad the old man says, cuss him out. But it's so much word in you that come up and say, peace be still. <laughs> You'll know you living by the word when your first reaction is an action that comes from the word of God. People, brethren, tune up your fruit of the spirit. Go ahead on and get them together. They're in your spirit. Joy, peace, and love. If you've already planted them, I want you to start thinking about them. And the next time somebody do something to try to take your joy, instead of, oh, I can't believe she said what she said. Oh, he walked past me and didn't speak. You reach down and pull up that joy that's planted in your heart and you give God some praise and you go to that person who didn't shake your hand and say, God bless you, my brother. I'm filled with the joy of the Lord. Now when somebody trying to mess up your peace and you want with all you got to cuss them out, you say in your spirit that love, joy, and peace are the fruit of the spirit. What would God do right now? And you give him a dose of peace. The word is created to produce the corresponding actions. Meaning, if you know you dealing with somebody. How many of y'all deal with hard head people? Raise your hand real quick. Now I want you to include yourself if some people think you hard headed. Raise your hand too. So I got something going, don't I? I'm hard headed, but I want to mess with somebody else who's hard headed. Well, God is saying, my head is hard enough for me not to worry about that hard head. So what I need to do is get in the word, allow the word to change my personality, that I begin to act, and
and respond the way Jesus would. And how do I do it? I got to love him. I got to respect him. And I got to want to represent him. When, it, when, you, when, when any of y'all would go into school or your kids today, if, you, if your kid get in trouble, you have to go up to the school. If you go up there to the school dressed inappropriately, do you think it would embarrass your children? And they wouldn't want you there? God said, I want my believers to carry themselves in a manner that they don't embarrass me. What if it came over your mind and my mind before we do something, how it would make God look and that could keep us from doing the wrong thing? So this week, plant goodness, plant some long suffering, and plant some temperance. Amen? The next time somebody argue with you, pull out long suffering. Pull out your temperance. In other words, you're gonna last longer. You're not just gonna go off like you used to. You got a long fuse instead of short fuse. And watch God make the increase in your life. Let's give the Lord a hand praise. Amen. And again, to our chairman of Deacon Board, he's going to be going out of town. Amen. So we want to keep him up in prayer. Amen. And before we dismiss the service, if there's anyone here who is not saved, if you don't know the Lord Jesus in the pardons of sin, we want to give you an opportunity to give your life to the Lord and people to be saved. You don't have to come up here. You can be saved right where you are. All you have to do is confess that you are a sinner and that you believe that Jesus died for your sin and he rose for your justification. If you believe that, he will save you. Amen? And if there's anybody who wants to be a member of Canaan, you want to join our church, we ask that you come up here. Amen? As the choir sings us, plays us some soft music. Amen? We won't keep the church open long, amen. How many of you feel good in your spirits this morning? How many of y'all got the victory? Wave your hand if you got the victory. How many of you ready to be of the Lord? How many of you are ready for God to be glorified in your body and to be glorified through your members? Let us stand. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray that you would saturate your word in your people's heart. Give them the faith to believe you for what they need. We plead the blood of Jesus over their lives, over their children, over their loved ones, and even over their jobs. And we pray, oh God, that you would bless them, that you would promote them, that you would keep them in good health. We ask that you bring comfort for those who are bereaved. And we pray that you bring, bring blessings of your presence to your people every minute of the day. And help us to rely and depend on you and live by faith and not by sight. It's in Jesus' name we pray all of these things. Amen. And you are dismissed.